What's happening, man? Y'all know it's the year of the hands over here. I don't know what everybody else is doing, but we're developing our hands over here. I got the pulse on today. Apologies, man. I was supposed to do a review on this thing weeks ago and just kept putting it off and putting it off because there's other content that I wanted to get up. But Friday, this Friday, you're going to get a full review at least from my experience with it anyways. This Friday, man, I'm gonna tell you all about this thing and let you know whether you should pick one up or not. Now, I never really talked about Swiss triplets up until this point, but uh, it's definitely one of those rudiments that I love to play. It's great for building control, you know, finger control and just like looseness of the hands. And it's, it's, a, it's a rudiment that really teaches you how to relax. But yeah, one day I was running some Swiss triplets and then I discovered something Real cool. Swiss triplet, if you haven't seen it before, just goes like this. It's like a, well, it's obviously a triplet type of feel. Da 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 da. And there's a little bit of this happening. One, two, one, two, three, four, uh. So that is the Swiss triplet. So one day I was doing that and I discovered that if you take a Swiss triplet and you stretch it out, you can straighten it right out to a double stroke. So after discovering that, I was just kind of going back and forth between the Swiss triplet and the double stroke. The two of those rudiments are very closely related. So it's since become one of my favorite warm-ups to do. And, um, and I especially like to do it at higher tempos because it just kind of, you know. Like it's really cool to get the, get the fingers warmed up and all that kind of stuff. You can get the wrist warmed up at the same time. So I'm going to show you how to make that transition. All right, man. So let me show you this because the transition from one to the other is actually really easy. And it just requires one simple adjustment with, um, with the left hand. So, first thing we need to understand is that we're dealing with two different fields here. There's a straight 16th, which is the double stroke. And then obviously the triplet feel, which is the Swiss triplet. So, flip-flopping back and forth. So like I said, you only need to do one little adjustment with the left hand. To, um, to make that happen. First of all, let me demonstrate those two feels for you. Straight 16th into the triplet. So if this is our tempo, uh, two, so we got 16ths, right? And then the triplet. And then 16ths, then in triplet. All right, so that's our sort of template for what we're doing here. So to make that transition, all you got to do with the left hand is when you make that move to the Swiss triplet, you're just going to shuffle the, um, the left hand. The right hand can pretty much continue to do what it's doing. Um, you're in turn going to actually start to shuffle the right hand as well. But one thing that I found just because of the way the body works, I guess, is that as soon as you start to shuffle the left hand, the right hand is just kind of going to start to adjust itself. So let me just isolate the two hands um, so you can see what I'm talking about, going from the straight to 
the shuffle feel. So if we, I'm just going to play my, um, my right hand on my knee so we can just hear the left hand. So if we're playing just straight doubles like this, one, two, three, four, uh, right now it's fairly straight, right? Now if I make that transition to the triplet, Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I'm just shuffling the left hand. That's about the only adjustment that you have to make. You don't need to think so hard about the right hand because like I said, for whatever reason, because I was, when I was thinking about how I can teach this to you guys, I was thinking about how to teach what to do with the right hand and then I discovered you don't even really have to because as soon as you start to shuffle the left hand, the right hand is going to follow. So you could try this. If you got sticks in your hand, you can try it with me now. Um, we're going to start just by playing a double stroke, just like that. Now just make that slight adjustment and start to shuffle the left hand. And it happens just like that, man. It's just like magic. And to go back, just straighten it out again. So that was super simple, right? Okay, so let's just practice going back and forth between the two. Once you get this down, like I said, this is going to be one of your favorite little warm-up exercises to do. Remember to keep your hands nice and relaxed. Try to enjoy the weight of the stick when you're doing this. You know what I mean? You don't have to, don't squeeze the stick too hard when you're doing this. This is very much a control exercise and for control you need a nice loose comfortable grip. So we're gonna go four bars of each. So four bars of doubles, four bars of the, uh, the Swiss triplet. If you're comfortable playing both, what I want you to do is just make a really sort of um, clear transition between one and the other for now. And then we're going to work on smoothing it out so that it almost kind of sounds like the same thing for a little bit until it turns into the next one. So let me find a tempo here. It's a little too fast. Let's just slow it down a little bit. That should be cool. Okay, so we're gonna start with the double. I'll count you off. Four bars of doubles, four bars of the Swiss triplet. Here we go. One, two, one, two, three, doubles. Two, three, four, triplet. Two, three, four, doubles. Swiss. Straight. Shuffle. Doubles. Swiss. Doubles, Swiss. My hands are totally relaxed right now. Swiss. A couple more times. Doubles. Swiss. Doubles. Swiss.
All right, so let's practice now just sort of straightening out that transition and making it as smooth as we can because you kind of want it to sound like you're fading from one to the other one, you know what I mean? Almost as if you have like two faders on a mixer and you're just kind of going from one to the other one. So it's just a nice, smooth, gradual transition. I mean, there's no specific benefit to doing this other than maybe the control factor. I just like it because it just sounds cool. So I find that it's, it's, uh, it's a little bit better to start with the Swiss and then go from the Swiss to the double. You can feel that transition a lot more. So all you're going to do is, is um, start with the Swiss, just like that. And you just slowly and gradually, like as, as best as you can, just slowly try to even the notes out until they sound like doubles. And then back. And then back again. You know what I mean? So you're just kind of fading in and out between the two instead of just like that, stopping one and starting the other one kind of thing. It's just a super cool warm up exercise to do. And I can do it for hours, man. It's so comfortable and your hands just feel so nice and relaxed and stuff when you're doing it. And it's a great warm up just to get the blood flowing. So yeah, all you're really doing between one and the other is you're changing the, the, the size of the gaps between the notes. You're literally doing the exact same sticking because if you notice this, doesn't change. Like my hands are constantly moving like this, right? So if you keep an eye on my hands or my, my forearms, it's the same thing. Right? So that stays exactly the same. The sticking is almost exactly the same. Like, like I said, it's just the space between those notes that's changing. So go ahead and mess around with that, man. I think it's really cool. I'm actually going to lay claim to it because I've never seen anybody else do it. So I'm going to call it Beatdowns Double Swiss Triplet Morph. Until I find out that somebody else has done it before me, that's what I'm calling it. Thanks for watching this video. Leave a comment below if you dig it. Like, subscribe. See you next video.